Hey everybody, my name is Clyde and in today's video, Scotta and I will be talking about aircraft carriers in clan battles. Which ones are you going to face? Which ones are you going to play? And which ones are best? We are by no means experts, but we hope you find this video useful and entertaining as you consider which aircraft carrier that you'd like to take into this next clan battles season. Let us know in the comments below which CV you're taking and why. And if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and keep your eyes peeled for our destroyer, battleship, and cruiser videos as well. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get into it. So what about CVs? This slide uh, did not take a lot of work. I put some photographs or some screenshots of the CVs up there and I just listed them for the, the various countries that exist. Now, the UK and Germany each have two carriers at their disposal. One is a premium um, for each of those countries. Um, I think the big takeaway I wanna talk about with CVs is the fact that I think you're gonna see them. They're going to be there and you're gonna to have to deal with them. That first battle where we went out in destroyers and I was in the hot Saharu and I couldn't get close enough to my targets to shoot them with my torpedoes, to launch torpedoes at them, that was a real big challenge for me. And that carrier knew it. He kept me spotted and kept attacking me with his ordnance as well. So, you know, as a destroyer captain, it's, it's gonna be frustrating to deal with carriers. Um, at least you won't have the radar thing, but the carriers are gonna be there for sure. So you know, you're going to need to be dealing with them. And, and so you're going to want cruisers and battleships that support you in that um, for sure. Uh, Scott, what's your general CV thought about the season that's coming up? Um, concerned. Um, if you look at how we've structured our conversation, uh, we're talking about a traditional kind of clan battle season, I think. And um, this isn't going to be traditional because Wargaming decided that you could play two carriers on the team you can yeah. run two CVs or you could run a battleship and a CV or you could run two battleships. Um, I think week one, when the really, really, really good clans, of which we are not of, we are duffers, we are middling players. 55% clan we, battle win rate. That's us. Right? We, em we embrace uh, that we're just normal. Uh, we're not like great. Uh, but uh, I think I think uh, there's a high pro pro probability that you might see really good clans run two carriers because tier six carriers are strong against tier six ships yeah um we we just again in in the weekend of of uh brawls in the 3v3 brawls um i played a lot of arc royal yep. because the uh and it and it and it was powerful and we i did a lot of damage in it and, and we we had really good teams with arc royal there right and so i i'm not a great carrier player i've been practicing playing carriers for i don't know when did i start really playing carriers when we did a rotations probably probably three four months now um, yeah i think it's well it was kind of at the tail end of the last carrier season you and i said okay or, or clan battle yeah. season we said okay we're gonna need to be able to have eyes in the sky next season so that's when we started yeah. playing. i started i started in because we didn't have any carrier captains really in our clan anymore and um right. i'm out of other things to level right quite frankly there's not very many tech tree tech tree lines i haven't finished at this point there's sure. like two or three destroyer lines that I'm already it's I'm at I'm at tier eight on everything at least uh in of the lines I haven't done so um as they introduce new lines that gives me something else to grind on but otherwise I'm just about done so I was like I'm gonna start playing carriers I'm gonna figure these out yeah. and I started playing and I decided I would play all the tier four carriers and get to tier six and then I would play all the sixes before I go up to eight and I'm halfway through my journey on the sixes right now I'm done with like I'm done with ranger and I'm done with furious um and I've been playing Ryujo lately and I know you've been doing similar. You you finished Furious already, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Um, and you purchased a Placable. Anyway, so we've both been playing a lot more Carrier than we ever thought we would. Um, <laughs> I think I've gotten serviceable. I don't think I'm great. I think I'm good enough for Tier 6. I don't know if I'm good enough for Tier 6 Clan Battles. That said, I'm, I'm concerned about Carriers and what the impact's going to be. I think one of the reasons that you might have seen Graf Spee get pulled is because uh, you could have run two CVs and two Graf Spees instead of Battleships. <laughs> And yes. uh, you, yes. you would have had a lot of hit points there, right? Um, part of the reason that my cruiser picks are all smoke cruisers because without radar, smoke is good for hiding from carriers. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm concerned. I, I think weekend one, we're going to encounter two CV teams. I don't know if we will later. I think as you get into the more of the middling groups, you'll have teams that just don't have a good CV player. Or they just don't want to play CVs. Um, I don't know if we'll run a CV. I don't know what our plan is for, for team structure. You and I haven't talked about it yet, but it's going to be, that's something that won't be done on this show, but uh, it's something right. that we'll probably talk <laughs> about and try to figure out with our clan. 
but um yeah and and so when we look at these six ships um do you want to talk a little bit about the ships um um we uh, can a little bit yeah and and i think that's probably worth doing you know i don't know how many people who are watching the show if there are carrier experts in chat by all means you know share with us what you know while we going through this uh it's got to point it out that we both kind of recently said okay let's learn these carrier things um, I'd probably say, and I think Scott would too, that he's a little further along on the carrier line than me, both in terms of making progress through the tiers, but also, um, you know, being able to perform in them. Um, Scott, I made the comment earlier. I, I want to talk about this before we jump into the ships themselves and I'll give, you know, what I know about them. But, uh, you know, he said, I don't know if I'm ready for tier six uh, for clan battles, right? Uh, carrier and clan battles is a whole nother thing. And we have to remember that a lot of times we log into a tier six battle and we feel comfortable because it's tier six. When clan battles are tier six, the same, you know, yahoos that you were fighting at tier 10 who run midways and, you know, Hakuryus and stuff, those guys just came down here. It's the same people with the same skills, right, that we're going to be playing in tier six. So when you're facing off against another captain in tier six clan battles, it is somebody who has, who could likely have very high skill, even though they're in a tier six ship, which looks very friendly and easy to approach, right? So the skills are gonna be still high. And I, I find that kind of interesting about lower tier clan battles. Um, I'll, I'll talk about a couple of these ships here. Uh, I've played through the Furious, so I can speak to that one. I'll start there and I might bounce around a little bit. Um, I'll have you talk maybe about the Ranger, but Furious, I, I like. Um, and I, I, you know, a lot of people say, oh, the UK battle or aircraft carriers are not very good. I like the Furious because when it sends out its bombers, its bombers drop tons of bombs. Um, and it's torpedo bombers, uh, they aim very quickly. So when you're, when you're coming in for an attack run with, uh, torpedo bombers, the, the, Torpedoes start wide and they get narrower. And that speed at which they get narrower uh, is dependent on the country. Not only do the UK ones get narrow fast, but then they actually cross, which means you can point the two torpedoes at one specific point on an enemy ship if you can target them that well. So as you get better with carriers, you'll get even better with aiming those torpedo bombers. Uh, the UK airplanes tend to have more hit points, at least for the Furious, uh, but you'll have fewer planes. Um, I found the Furious a pretty comfortable carrier to learn on i don't think it's the most powerful carrier i tend to hear from people that ryujo um, hits the hardest and is therefore the best alpha strike carrier um, if somebody knows differently or wants to you know share their thoughts in chat by all means go ahead and scott i'll, I'll throw this to you in a sec but ryujo has less hit points uh, than most countries on its airplanes the J japanese carriers have fewer hit points but they hit harder so it's kind of that you know lightweight striker type aircraft rather than the Furious, which kind of comes in, their planes are a little bit slower, they have more hit points, but um, they don't quite punch as hard as Ryujo. Um, I was going to throw it to you to talk maybe about Ranger. I know you've played the Ranger quite a bit, Scott, if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, as far as U.S. carriers go, um, they're they're kind of the middle tier, I think, as far as, like, use. Like, I, I, I found Ranger to be, be pretty good. Ranger's... Um, Rangers torpedoes are pretty good. They're not uh, they're not as good as Ryujos, but they're pretty good. Um, Ranger has HE bombs that uh, they only pen uh, or they pen fifty three millimeter and they have pretty good damage and they have a fifty two percent fire chance, which is good. Um, uh, yeah, you know, and and then the the Rangers rockets um, are HE rockets that are serviceable and you know the rocket change is hard with the machine oh, gun. Oh yeah, we should talk about but, this. Yeah. Um, but like you know if you if you use those rockets if you know it's harder to use them on destroyers now and so like that's makes ranger a little bit trickier to like fight a dd because it's torps aren't the greatest for trying to torp a dd and like the bombs aren't going to really hit a dd unless you're lucky and the the rockets you have to yeah. you have to deal with that machine gun animation right and so like that <laughs> makes it a little harder probably than when i played ranger right now um but yeah, I, I think um, you know Rangers planes have a good amount of hit points compared to Japanese planes, and and I think uh, I think Rangers like like it's a good carrier. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. It doesn't have like an. I feel like uh, it's really balanced. Overt weakness. You know? Yeah, it doesn't have like an overt giant weakness. Yeah, um, Finder Keeper, thanks for the follow. Um, I, I feel the same way about the Ranger. I think it's nice and balanced. Um, I think its planes are faster. They're faster than the UK planes, which I like. One thing I love about playing any carrier except for the UK ones is how quickly you can get to where you're going. The German carriers are pretty quick too. Um, 
I have the Loen Heart. I picked that up just before they removed it from the game because I was talking in chat and I said, I don't know, should I get Loen Heart? And somebody said, Yeah, go get it. You got to get it. Um, and so, uh, you know, I was like, Fine. So I went and I bought it and I'm glad I did. It's, it's going to be a good uh, ship to have if I wind up playing more CVs. Um, Wesser has the AP rockets, which if you're going to get an air, uh, a light cruiser or even a media, a heavy cruiser, um, those AP rockets, if you get a nice sideways, uh, sideways, sideways approach, uh, you can punch through and get citadels with the AP rockets, which I find valuable. And low and hard, does it have those two, Scott? I, I'm trying to remember right now. Yeah. A so Wesser and low and hard. Yeah. Wesser and low and hard both have AP rockets. Um, the Lowenhart, where it's different from the tech tree, is Lowenhart has an H, has HE bombs, and so gotcha. Lowenhart's right. HE bombs are really powerful. They they'll pen sixty eight millimeter. They have a huge damage. They do like 12,000 12, damage or something. It's like insane, and and they actually have a sixty nine percent fire chance, which is the highest fire chance of any yeah, of the absurd. HE bombers. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's worth pointing out. And then the other thing that's cool about Lowenhart, which I, I know we're bragging on a ship that's not available, so hopefully you know if you're interested in this, you already have it. Um, is the bombing reticle is a circle instead of an oval, which means that it doesn't matter what angle you want to approach the ship. If you can get that circle on top of the deck, uh, you'll be able to bomb them from that angle just as effectively as if you came in behind them like you're supposed to with the bombing run or in front of them, depending on your approach. Um, so yeah, the Lowenhart's got that advantage, which is really great. I think you'll see people using Ryujo and Lowenhart to good effect and I think you'll see Arc Royals out there too for the carpet bombs. Um, the Arc Royal has tons of bombs. It launches three torpedoes instead of two, like on uh, Furious. So Arc Royal is going to be a capable ship. It pays for this with really slow airplanes. They go like 40 knots slower than other uh, uh, other aircraft carrier planes. Um, so I think you'll see Arc Royals, um, particularly just because of that extra ordinance that they can take. But I think Lowenhardt is going to be the premium uh premium overpowered ship of the day would be my read on this and and wesser or vesser whatever i think people are going to use that one to good effect too the ap rockets are good um and i think the torpedoes are fine on the german ships they run a long time i don't think they're very fast if i recall correctly uh, but i think vessers you're going to see those out there so I, you know honestly my advice to a carrier captain and this is coming from a guy who's not a very good carrier captain yet is uh find the one that you're comfortable with and take it out and if you're an expert carrier captain you already know what that ship is if you're not um but you your clan needs you uh, take the one you've got the best experience in the one that you seem to have the best consistent damage output in the best consistent uh win rate in that kind of stuff look at those numbers and let that kind of guide you if you're if you're not like i'm 100 percent sure on what ship to take look for the one that you're comfortable in because you're really going to be the most effective in a ship that you know and understand its properties um, I don't know, Scott, any other thoughts about the, the CVs we got on the list here? Uh, yeah, you know, Wesser, Wesser and Ryujo both have AP bombs. And so uh, versus the battleship targets, that's uh, right. going to come true. into play. Ryujo's AP bombs, there's a lot of talk about the German AP bombs and, and how great they are on Richtofen and stuff. And people have dealt with that. Um, but the the there the differences are kind of interesting between the two. The 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 Ryujo AP bombs actually pen 228 millimeters, and the Germans pen 227. So that's kind of a mute, like kind of a push. Um, and the Ryujos uh, have a max damage of 51 uh, 5100, whereas the Germans have a max damage of 7000. But the nerf that hit the so when you mention how Lowenhart has that round bomb reticle. You know, yeah. that was the original bomb reticle for all the German tech tree C CV, uh, CVs, and it was super powerful, especially with those AP bombs. And yeah. so they nerfed that, right? And so all the German tech line BBs now have, or CVs now have that oval, and their their AP bombs are a lot more RNG affected than they used to be. And so, like, I find that the Ryujo's AP bombs are easier to put on target on a battleship than the, than the Wessers right now. Um, even though the Westers should be able to do more damage if you land them and they should be able to Citadel just as easy. Um, I spent a bunch of time in a training room uh, with all of the tier six tech tree battleships and each of these carriers trying one torpedo run and one bomb run each. And um, surprisingly pretty much standard, like pretty much basic landed the same amount of hits and it was, you know, very normal play style thing, but I did the most average damage uh, in those two attack runs with Ryujo than I did out of any other one I tested. Um, 
you know, just because yeah. you're relying a lot more. Like, our, it, you know, when we were talking about bomb pen, like Furious's HE bombs only pen 32 millimeters. Uh, Arc Royals only pen 19 millimeters, right? So they, they're not going to pen a battleship. They barely pen a cruiser. That's important um, to know. But, yeah. but you drop a you drop a, a sack of them and they, they start fires. And, you know, it's kind of Furious's gimmick too. I think all of them are viable in the hands of a skilled CV carrier. And I think one of the things that I can't speak to is like, I don't know how big the map sizes are for tier six clan battles. And like we learned in brawls, like Ark Royal was really powerful in a small map because you can, and it gets rid of the one thing that sucks about it, which is how slow the planes are. So if the maps are smaller then that, would not affect arc royal and that would be interesting uh but really again you know you're talking like you said guys who play tier 10 competitive carrier down playing tier 6 competitive carrier and all of a sudden hey look there's no aa mom uh you know they're just gonna kick people's <laughs> teeth in and so that's my big fear is that you yeah, just get your, it's you gonna just, be you're just gonna get beat up and and like i said i've been trying to learn how to play carrier and you've been trying to learn how to play carrier we are not tier 10 carrier captains yet I joke no. that I'm a tier four CV main. I'm 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 maybe a tier five CV main now. That's about how good I feel about the sixes. But yeah, I'm not. I'm I don't like. I go out and I have some tier eight aircraft carriers and I've played them and I've done okay. But I'm not there yet skill wise. Totally. Um, and so like you know that's a that's a concern for me. Um, I don't know how well we'll do the first couple weeks of clan battles. I do think that that'll normalize and later in the season you're going to encounter more battleship compositions. But we'll see. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm... It's different. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I I too fear the uh, the competent high tier carrier captains who know who have to deal with less AA at this tier, right? I, I think that's going to be a concern for sure. Um, but you know, like you said, I think it'll normalize. Uh, I think we'll see a lot more folks bring in battleships as as time goes on. Um, but I think definitely week one, you're going to spot some folks running two carriers and seeing if they can cross drop and and folks that can really dance that CV, that airplane ballet are going to do. Uh, they're going to be frustrating, but I think they're going to be not the norm. So, you know, I guess we'll see kind of how this matures over the weeks in clan battles. I'm really interested to see how it goes. Like you say, it's exciting. It's different. Um, I know a lot of people don't look forward to low tier clan battles. Um, I kind of do. I, I like that. World of Warships competition is great at most of the tiers. Anything probably like five and above, I'm having a pretty good time in. Um, and I think this is going to be a demonstration of that. Uh, and especially getting rid of Graf's Bay forces that cruiser conversation that we had earlier. It's so difficult to choose the perfect cruiser because there isn't one. And honestly, that's the way the game should be. Whereas last time we had tier six clan battles, we all chose Graf's Bay. You know, it it's not that anymore. And I'm very excited by that, that there's going to be these different comps we're going to have to be up against. Um, I'm sure at times I'll be frustrated by it, but other times I'm really going to have a, a good time um, with that as well. Um, so I think we've got one more slide and this is the other thing about CVs is that uh, here come the Soviets. So we are expecting Soviet carriers to launch sometime during clan battles. Scott, do you have a hunch on the date for that? I know you usually have your ear to the ground on that better than I do. Yeah, they they posted in the um, dev blog uh, back into last week. Okay. That um, Soviet CVs will enter early access in 10.8. So tomorrow we get 10.7. 10.7 uh, right. will... 10.7 will run into September, right? But September is uh, birthday month, right? So usually in September, we hit birthday month and we get 10.8 will also be the patch that has free super containers for your tier 10s and all that fun stuff that we get in birthday month. Um, and, you know, the sixth anniversary of the game that we all enjoy talk talking about spending yeah. our hobby on. So I'm excited for it. Um, so they said they'll go into early access and we talked about this and that's why you included the slide. I think it's, highly likely that that early access will hit in mid September. Uh, I think this patch round, if we look at the dates, we're getting this patch on, uh, in the, on the NA server on, on August 11th. Um, I think it's highly likely that we get 10.8. We could get it as early as, as, uh, September 8th. Um, this could be just a four week, um, patch round because they yeah. want to get they want to get to the birthday month right usually they run that birthday month and then that kind of runs up and then the next patch that hits has halloween right and then right, the next patch right. after that the next patch after that pretty much has your christmas events right and then the year's over and we're dealing with another dockyard so 
maybe the eighth, maybe it's after the eighth, maybe it's the fifteenth. I don't know. I just don't feel like we're getting a patch on the eleventh, and they're going to go five weeks. I feel like it's going to be a shorter run because um, they would like to get that birthday month in September, and, and so that, oh, that would give us that would give us two to three weeks of this clan battle season uh, that runs until October third, um, where these early access Russian carriers are in the game, and more likely than not. Uh, you'll be able to get the six during early access, right? You'll either be able to whale to it, um, or you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to to um, play missions over the course of the patch and get uh, get your hands on it. And so we might see that pop up in the last couple weeks of clan battles. Um, and it's a totally different kind of play style. They've taken some nerfs lately on the PTS, which is good, um, but it's a, it's a different kind of beast. Yeah, and, and so we'll kind of talk about that a little bit, just at a high level, because again, I've only fought against these ships. I haven't fought in one. Um, and they have taken a couple of nerfs, but the general concept of these ships is every squadron that takes off from the deck is one attacking flight. Whereas I can speak again to the Furious the best, probably. It takes off six airplanes, and every pair of them is an attacking flight. So the other four are flying around getting shot up by aircraft uh, anti-aircraft gunfire while I'm doing my attack run with the other guys. With the Serov or with these Soviet cruisers, you're going to take off a, mo a mess of airplanes and they're all going to attack and then they're all going to go back home to the carrier, any of them that survived, and you're going to launch all new ones, right? So uh, that is going to change kind of the, the nature of how these ships are going to play, which I think is really going to be... Uh, interesting to watch. It's going to mean that you don't have to worry about loiter damage as you're flying around your airplanes getting shot up while you're doing work with other airplanes. Every planes, every set of planes that goes in for the attack run is going to be full strength with the Soviets, right? Um, we have seen a couple of nerfs, and since I this this text here that I extracted and put on the screen, I guess it's over here, um, is from an early posting, and they've made a few changes, but I think this general concept still holds true. And so, like Scott says, if you know the Soviet carriers come out mid season. And that back half or even the back three weeks makes Serov available. You can bet that later on in the season, you're going to see a resurgence of carrier play or at least maybe just some new Serovs showing up. And we expect with Russian bias, these to be pretty powerful ships. They're going to be capable um, and uh, they're going to be very alpha strikey would be my read on what I'm seeing here on the uh, uh, the dev blog commentary and stuff. So uh, as we watch for these, just be aware they're coming, right? We're going to have to deal with Soviet carriers um, and just like any other carrier with a skilled captain in it, it's going to be trouble. So I don't know that this is something that should really give you, a, a, you know, s something stuck under your craw. This shouldn't, you know, sour you on war gaming or anything. Changes to the game are a part of this thing. Uh, and this is another change to the game that's coming. And we just want to be ready for it so that we can figure out, you know, is there a counter that we can figure out in the meantime? Uh, so I don't know. Any final thoughts on Soviet carriers, uh, which, again, they're on their way, Skata? Uh, yeah, the play style is wonky. I don't want to get into that too much. But yeah. one thing that's coming into the game tomorrow with the captain rework is there is a new four point CV captain skill that um, increases how fast your planes get to the altitude that they don't take AA oh, damage that's after right. a strike. That skill, in my opinion, is completely being included to benefit this line of carriers yep. because then they will lose less planes post strike. I actually played with that skill on the PTS with Ryujo and um, uh, Lexington, I think. And even on those carriers, I noticed it had value that um, you're, you're, you know, if you have a winged plane, that's going to take damage on that pullout. It's, it's uh, it, it gets out of the way. Right. So so I think that skill, though, is completely uh, yeah. about getting the Russian planes out of the AA even faster. Um, and you got to remember that ordnance on these Russian CVs, I don't remember which where it starts, if it's on the eight, but like they have skip bombers. They have torpedoes that they have planes that drop large numbers of torpedoes in really tight little packs. Um, they have really uh, interesting ordnance choices on them. Right. And so, um, again, the planes are tissue paper weak, and they did have a heel that they removed from all of them because you could basically pop the heel during the strike and not lose the planes, and then they'd go back, and they, they realized that was too powerful. But um, it would be interesting to see. I look forward to playing them, even though I don't like that they're completely fictitious. Um, <laughs> yes. But I, I, yes. I, I look, I mean, like, I, I look forward to playing them. 
it's a, just a different thing to learn how to play. Yeah, totally agree. Um, I, you know, they're coming and again, it's a change to the game. Uh, you know, G Max says, Hey, complaining about the game is part of the game. And he's right. Right. A little healthy come griping every now and again is okay. I don't want to tell anybody they have to pretend to put a fake smile on their face when they're here. But, um, the, the big thing is, is, you know, Hey, we have a problem with these Soviet carriers coming in. What are we going to do about it? Right. We got to move forward and, and, Figure out what the what the resolution is going to be for those of us playing destroyers, cruisers, battleships, the other carrier, whatever. So, hey, thanks for joining us for this World of Warships clan battles discussion. We hope you'll find the videos on the other classes and watch those as well. If you liked what you saw here, share it with a friend, send it to your clan mates, hit that like button, subscribe, and again, comment down below. And of course, we'd love to have you join us at twitch.tv slash Live. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. which ones we think are the best for this upcoming season of tier six clan battles. We are not no, by <laughs>